Hello, everybody. Guess what? Vienna Symphonic Library have released Prime, which is an all-in-one mid-price library, um, which is sort of, if you haven't got a decent library or you want to get into the world of a particular library, these all-in-ones are really, really good. So um, it goes really sort of head-to-head -head with things like Spitfires, BBC Symphony Orchestra, Core. Um, and it's priced a little bit higher than that because Core is, what, £400? And this is after the initial introductory period is going to be more like 500 or 600 and something dollars. But look, um, there's some big differences between the two and lots of similarities. And I think the easiest way to, to, for you to find out whether um, this is your cup of tea is if we just dive straight in and try and write something. Um, it comes with a Synchron player. Here it is. And you'll see you get... Yeah, you get all you get basically all the essential instruments for uh, the orchestra: um, piccolo, flute, oboe, English horn, clarinet, bass clarinet, bassoon, etc., etc. Um, you know there are some differences between um, you know the instrument coverage between VSL Prime and things like BBC Spit, uh, Symphonic Orchestra, uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra Core, um, but you know where. VSL may have a couple of extra woodwinds, uh, BBC will have more string articulation, so it all kind of balances up. I think what you'll find is, what it really comes down to is whether you like the sound of the room, whether you like the sound of the samples, um, because Synchron is a much, uh, Prime is a much more focused sound, whereas obviously BBC Symphony Orchestra is symphonic. Um, so, you know, let's dive in and see what's what. Um, so I'm going to pick up on the harp first of all. <laughs> this, I, it's moments like this I think, why didn't you work out something in France and then just do it? I'm sorry, <laughs> I haven't. Um, the other thing, okay, I tell you, first out of the box, what I'm going to do, um, and this is quite a significant difference, is you get mic positions in uh, Prime. Uh, here you go. I mean, you only get two, you get room and close, but that is more than enough. Look, if you do, that sounds like um, a harp uh, in an orchestral setting. Whereas if you just go with the close <laughs> and you play it badly, it gives you the ability and you can, you can essentially have, um, you know, a proper solo instrument. And that's quite nice. It's very nice, actually. I mean, all the, so all the instruments have got this. So they haven't got close or mid mics, but I'm going with this. Let, I'm going to do, I don't know, what am I going to do? I'm just going to start playing. earth is that? I have no idea. What was I playing? So I'm playing, you can't see because of this whacking great microphone in the way, I'm sorry. Here you go, I'll move it like that. So you're going. So it's either a C minor 7 um, or an E6, depending on how, E flat 6, depending on how you view it. So I have a feeling that what's about to come out is going to be slightly modal, which wouldn't be surprising. Right, let's get some uh, violin longs up. Long notes, soft attack. You see, this is, this is also, this is a very vsl -y thing to do. Um, you get sort of layers of control. So you can choose uh, staccatos, on the, the full Synchron libraries, you get dozens of these sort of secondary options. So you use the first option um, um, octave down here to choose between longs and shorts and things like that. And then you choose normal attack, soft attack, marcato attack, etc. Uh, and then you can choose the release. Now, um, this cuts two ways. Either you say, oh, wow, isn't it great to have so much choice? Um, and or you go, oh, no, this is too much like hard work. Um, so it's like the Spider-Man thing. With great power comes great responsibility. Um, so it really depends on how you want. Why is it, why am I keeping on going out of, I, do you know, I felt out of focus there for a moment. So look, so th that's, that's, that's how it rolls. Um, let's, oh, let's just go for it, guy. I'm going to play 
play a legato y sort of sound, I'd better go on to a legato sample. That's all right. And I get, uh, again, I get the choice of all my little um, starts. Sounds weirdly like a bit of Tomb Raider. Do you remember the old Tomb Raider? Of course you do. You were there. <gasps> On your PS2 or whatever it was. Oh my lord. Great music. Great, just great. Right, I'm going to keep this going. Okay, now. Oh dear. I've just quantized it to uh, eighth triplets, which is really not very helpful. Because it's going to make it do that weird sh stuff. Right, I feel a sort of slight cannon coming on here. Uh, okay, let's see how it goes. If we're going to do, okay, look, if we're going to do the full on, um, that's how it used to go, isn't it? That's how Tomb Raider went. Don't do it, guy. You can't just lift Tomb Raider. Or can I? No, no, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to. <laughs> that's your legato clarinet for you. Do you like it? I like it. Okay. Ooh. Okay, can I just draw your attention to something here? Um, I have a template built with 109 tracks in it and it is running in less than 10 gigabytes of memory. Uh, so as you can see, bonk, 9.5 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and it's not really moving the meter very much in terms of um, CPU, albeit that this is a big groany kind of um, conquer all type machine. So it runs in, I've got, so I've got a proper full orchestral template here running in nine and a half gigabytes of RAM. For those of you on limited technical resources, that is quite a big deal. Um, the VSL Synchron player is pretty efficient and it doesn't hammer your uh, CPU. So I haven't tried it, but I would imagine if you're running on a on a MacBook or Mac Mini or something, um, then this would be, you know, a consideration. Um, but at the time of writing, VSL is uh, the Synchron player is not M1 native. That um, they have said uh, is their next big priority. So let's hope that they get there. Right. What else are we going to throw into this uh, slightly random? <laughs> First to this, this doesn't sound like a terrible piece of music yet. Oh, a little bit of a maybe might come in. Ooh. the other thing which a lot of you are keen on is yeah but what about all those short string things what about those shorts i want to know what the shorts are like okay so now for no other compositional reason than i know that you marion in melbourne want to know what the shorts sound like i'm now going to go on to shorts 
even though that probably isn't what I'd do. Oh, well, I might do. Who knows? So you can hear it's quite a small section. So this is, it's an all-in-one chamber orchestra. And, do you know, um, okay, so the job, the commercial job I'm working on at the moment um, is half live orchestra and half samples. And one of the reasons um, when I work on that particular job I'm using more VSL stuff is because it's how it fits the size of the live orchestra. So the two go together quite well and it sounds very realistic. Um, other jobs, um, I use other libraries. I've got, t as you know, I've got tons of Spitfire stuff and I use that a lot as well. Um, but it's a different sound and it's not all, you know, it's, I'm very lucky to have all this stuff and it's, you know, horses for courses in a way. So you can start to hear. Now, if I wanted to ease that off a bit, if that sounds a little bit uh, too uh, close, I could take the mids down, push up those, those room mics, take the mids out completely if I... Or listen to that. So you really do get a lot of control here. Um, bold and I, oh, can you see this bold and agile thing up here? All their their things come in. Oh, a lot of them come in bold and agile. Now, sometimes, frankly, I can't tell the difference. It doesn't seem to make any difference at all. And other times, it makes a huge difference. So, um, yeah, just while we're here. Uh, so you get staccatos, longs, legatos, sforzato, tremolan, tremolo, uh, pizzicato, portamento, which goes you know, like that. Um, but let's stick with our shorts because, as I say, Marion in Melbourne wants to know. that though that's the trouble Marion what have you done to me okay that's all right uh, I'm now going to set the track delay because that's going to sound like now it's quantized To that because we have yet to explore other things like um, brass and stuff have we we haven't gone to that yet no you haven't got it right I'm gonna put some more okay um, let's go back to my harp Another thing worth saying here is um, there's uh, simultaneously with the uh, release of uh, um, the Prime Library, there's a whole load of little free libraries which are coming out, including um, harp glisses and things like that. That's nice, isn't it? Harp gliss, violin runs and soft piano. And we're going to explore all of those as well. Uh, where are we? What are we going to decide we're in? Are we in C minor? I think we probably are. Or are we in E flat major? <sighs> we're in a sort of more of a Dorian E flat. I'll probably go for some. Uh, I'm going to go for some. the first one I hit actually worked rather well so I'm going to leave it oh retro record thank you God, how many times they should they shouldn't call it retro record they should call it get out of jail free because that's essentially what it is. 
That's all right. Okay, I'll go with that. I am easily pleased today. Right. So it's got a fantasy vibe. Yeah. Right, now, moving on to the brass, because it's a brass occasion now, what you get is you get a, a French horn one and a French horn two. So you get two solo instruments, or you get the whole lot as A6. So you get six players playing together. This is quite a useful way of looking at it, because if you want a due, which is what I often write for, so you've got two horns on each note, you just duplicate the track on the first horn and because they're two completely separate samples um separate recordings for horn one and horn two trumpet one trumpet two um you've got the same with all the woodwinds and all the rest of it um so let's um what are we going to put in here uh we're going to go for something <sighs> decisions 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 uh Noticed, um, oh, oh, that my get out of jail free card just didn't get me out of jail free. I'm going to change the harmony here. So that's working all right, um, but we need to change. We can't just go on pretending nothing's happened. Oh, I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, okay, what was, what is this? Okay, now I remember how I played that. <laughs> what did I play? To delete the whole thing, maybe I can just edit it. Uh, so, and turn it into. Now, there's probably a fancy logical preset thingy in to change this, but I don't know it, and I can't be bothered. Uh, what's that going to go? Do, do, do. Um, what happens if I just knock the G down? I like that quite a lot. So I need to change this though. a bit of a moment. Um, am I going to keep these pitches going on the bottom? I think I am. I think I am. Right, Jelly. I wonder why it sounded weird. It's not a cello, it's a piano. 
you'd think I'd notice after all these years of playing music, the difference between a cello and piano. I'm sorry. Soft gong. Okay. Now, about introducing some lower brass, we're going to go for some trombones. But not that type of trombone, that's a bit on the short side. We're going to go for some longs. for a bass trombone legato. string runnings. Du -du 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 -du. On from 14 in 16s. Donk. That's not. I've done it again, haven't I? Now, I'm often wondering about is what I'm going to go for. So I'm going to play it in step time. What I've got, okay, so we're going to start on bar 14. We're in 16th notes, and I'm going to be playing from the keyboard. I'm going to try and play in, well, violin one and two parts, really. Um, it's going to go. to F. That's absolute rubbish. Start again. It, 
It's sort of easier and sometimes not. Lots of dodgy notes. It's all right. Um, I should have done a second bar, but I'm going to be lazy and do that. We're nearly there, to be honest, in what I'm going to do today. Um, let's get the... So we got the that going. We need to get... We've got the basses going underneath. I'm going to start... I'm going to take those pit spaces out and go for... We're going to go for... We're going to put some bottom... <laughs> And we're going to reinforce that second line with the viola line. Okay, and we're going to add uh, some. Uh, what have we got? Bass clarinet. some oboe to that line <laughs> sorry um, and I want a, a bit of a flourish and then we're going to go call it a day because I think by now you're starting to get the gist of how this library works So there isn't, they don't do um, uh, pre-recorded cymbal uh, crescendi, you have to play it on the... Which I put, I put early, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I'm a free spirit. I don't care. Um, what about... Timps, I'll tell you what, I'm going to duplicate the track, it's easier. And then I'll put the rolls on the other one because it's on a key switch. Uh, how do you feel about key switches? Oh, you can do use articulation IDs, uh, sort of. Okay, I'm going to put that on rolls. some Celesta. How do we feel about this piece?
Um, so there we go. So there's some Celeste added in. Not you could hear it very clearly. Um, okay, let's go into Celeste. Do I have any mic position choices? Mix. Oh, I could like her to turn anything up. Everything was turned down. Do a gratuitous string run at the end. Yep, a gratuitous string run. That's it, we're done. So there you go. Um, oh, you want a little playthrough? Okay, so I'm not using, okay, I'm not using their built in reverb, I'm using cinematic rooms just because I like cinematic rooms, but their built in reverb sounds absolutely fine. Um, the sound you're getting is, as I said at the beginning, it's a sort of focused, typical film sized. This is a sort of, what is it? 40, 50 piece, 50 piece orchestra, I would imagine, uh, if you were going to translate it in, into the real world. Um, whereas, uh, obviously BBC Symphony is like 75 or 80. So it's a quite a different sound. Um, this, um, Look, I'm not going to bang on about whether I... You know, it, it, it's... <laughs> I'm lost for words. <laughs> I'm going to let the uh, the music and the library speak for itself and you can make your own mind up what you think. There you go. So that's all VSL, including three free libraries, which is the Hello VSL, whatever it's called, which is one is uh, Harp Glisses, Violin Runs and Soft Piano. Um, no, it's great. I like it. Um, it's a, a really well uh, polished uh, production. It sounds pucker. Um, it's would I go for this over? Look, the which do I go for? BBC Symphony Orchestra Corps or this? <coughs> I don't know. Which do you like? Um, it's it's ultimately down to how important being able to modify those mic positions are, which is something which VSL can do. The sort of focused sound which you get from VSL, the sound of the synchron stage, which is a, you know, a, 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 a scoring stage, which is a really specific sound, um, which uh, you know I personally really like. Um, You've got, you got more instruments, but slightly fewer articulations. Then there's the whole kind of VSL ecosystem when it comes to controllers and things like that, which you either like or you don't. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of BBC Symphony Orchestra and the, um, the piece I did last week, whenever you're watching this, about um, turning a few notes into a three-minute piece of music is done entirely with BBC Symphony Orchestra. And that also sounds great. So this is, you know, it's not like one is kind of, oh, yeah, that blows it out of the water, man. It's, the, you know, it's, it's personal taste. And, uh, you know, you will be very happy with either one. I'm absolutely sure. But look, it's really nice to have the choice. It's lovely to have all this extra stuff, uh, you know, which people can go out there and uh, look at. Um, we're just fortunate to live in an age when people are producing such incredible um, sound libraries. Um, so uh, thank you uh, very much indeed, VSL, for, um, for this. Um, VSL gave me this review copy uh, a few weeks ago, so I've been playing with it. Um, so you know, full disclosure. Um, but it's, you know, it's a really good piece of work. Um, and 
Um, I'm sure lots of people were very happy with it. Look, that's all for today. Hope you found it useful and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>